Father, grant us favor this morning. Forget, forgive us, dear Lord God, of speaking in your atmosphere rather than letting you speak, Father. Forgive us. Grant us favor that every time we come into your presence, come in your presence with reverence. They come in your presence with reverence and with fear. Dear Lord God, knowing that this is your atmosphere, we have no right speaking into it unless we are glorifying and worshiping you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Cleanse us, sanctify this atmosphere by your blood. And Father God, it is yours, sovereign Lord of all. Jesus Christ, we pray by the power of your Holy Spirit. This morning, hallelujah. We praise you, we honor you. Oh, now, Almighty God, as we get into your word. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we are continuing our journey this morning in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 43 to 45 this morning, by God's grace. We understand in this chapter, uh, Evangelist and the man of God, Stephen, is speaking to his own brethren and his own kind, his people, children of Israel, you understand, who was trying to shut him down. Their old goal, and it's going on in this world as we speak, is to get rid of any knowledge, any idea of the name of Jesus Christ. It is being taught that there are many people, and I did not understand the level of this, how powerful this is, that in this country and around the world, there are many leaders in the churches, from the churches, on the spiritual and economical and financial level in this world who are part of these organizations that they make secret pledge. They start off with the Bible and then when they reach a certain level of degrees in these organizations, they take up the Koran <laughs> and denounce the book because of status, fame and glory that is promised to them in this world. So we are understanding these, and this is one of the things why I keep on, the Lord God keep on using me to mention to a lot of you, to pray hard, even if you have to fast, to walk in the spirit and to see in the spirit by the glory and power of the Holy Spirit upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. It is very important. We live in a time that is very serious and desperate times because the enemy is seeking for as much soul to take them to hell rather than allow them to even get a revelation of the kingdom of heaven. So here he's talking to them in verse 40, 43, 45, and he's saying to them, continue here, as we have seen from verse 5, as we have seen how the people, how their heart have been hardened against God. God is in their midst. They have seen the miracles of the, of, of the dividing of the Red Sea. They have seen the miracle of God, how God came down by fire. And, and when, they, when the enemy was upon them was to destroy them, how God by fire came down in their midst and divided them against the army of the Egyptians just before the Red Sea was divided. They witnessed all these things of the presence of Almighty God, but still their heart was hardened. And we continue to see how hard their heart was. That they, <laughs> it's like someone's having their blessings before them, but they are so blinded by sin and everything else that they couldn't, they cannot see it. That what they're looking for is right there before them. So here in verse 43 it says, You also took up the tabernacle of Malak. And I need you all to do your research on this as to Malak. And the star of your God, Bremfen. Yo, look, look those things up. Get a time and look it up, beloved. Images which you made to worship. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Hmm. Our fathers had a tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen. Speaking of the Ark of the Covenant. Which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So here, continued, continued here, we begin to see how the human heart, no matter how much we say we give our life to God and we give our life to Christ, beloved, 
these people in the whole testament they do not have what we have you see because transformation of the mind comes by reading by knowledge knowledge changes your mind your thinking pattern a lot of people why they keep them ignorant and keep them away from education and knowledge and access to it so that they can become laborers and 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 a lot of them their lives short live is because of the ability to think constructively and logically so that they are able to make the right and proper choice so a lot of this happened here these people didn't have knowledge they did not have full knowledge of their god no one sit down and was able to teach them so that they could condition themselves and realize that oh now i can see the difference between right and wrong now i can see the difference between the god of egypt and the god our true living god now who wants us to live a true life and a real life that what the egyptians and the life of the egyptian was it was going to be destroyed the god is going to destroy them but we will live because we have the knowledge of, of truth beloved i say this to you and me right now in these days and times and season we live in a world where knowledge is available in every way we can think of it either by this book or by your cell phone you have the access to knowledge to know the difference between right and wrong to know the difference between evil and good to know the difference between who is the true and living god and who is the false gods we have no excuse when the presence of Almighty God show up in our lives, we have no excuse. The book of Romans teaches us that. If you go to the book of Romans chapter 1, it shows me and you that there are many of us, we know who the true and living God is, but we chose to worship the very creation of our hands. So God gave us up to what is called delusion. The spirit of delusion. Beloved, you do not want this to happen to your life. It's like saying your life is cursed. Especially when you intentionally chose to sell your soul, when you intentionally chose to go the other path, when you know the real path is the path of God and his righteousness and his holiness. Because delusion means that you are now living in your own reality. You're living in your own truth. It has nothing to do with the truth of God's word because you're not abiding by God's will. You're living according to your will which is means that Satan is now your father and is getting the glory out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So this is what Israel has done here. God, the most high God, is in their presence. Is in their presence. But they chose to serve the God the, of images created by their hand. They believe in the things that they in, in their hand, which is just the things that are made by their own hands. Can you imagine it? That the true and living God is before you, but you chose to make something like a pen out of your hand because you see other nations are doing that, so you chose to do it. How crazy it is. I don't remember where I read it, but it was somewhere, I don't know if you remember if it was Danny, but I was finding out, it's not in the scriptures, the guy reads a lot of stuff on this, that these gods that they created, that a lot of times they would bring food to these false gods and put it in their mouth. And then they would, you know, the food would disappear. And a prophet was, was God revealed the, the, the truth to a prophet. And a prophet went through these side entrances and, 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 and side doors. And because playing on the people's ignorance of not knowing this, the, when the prophet went through these side doors and went up into the mouth of the so-called gods, images that they created, they realized it was the priests the priests and the leaders who are taking all that food from them and their family. It has nothing to do with no God consuming no food. So they play on the ignorance, beloved. You have to be knowledgeable. You have to be curious every day as to what's going on in this world and around you. You have to be curious. You have to want to know for yourself. You cannot allow them to feed you because if the government feeds you and is giving you all the information you need and you sit back on it, beloved, you will find yourself like a lamb to the slaughter. Save yourself this day, beloved. And go down on your knee and worship God in spirit and in truth in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? To save yourself from false God, from paganism, so you can make it into the kingdom of heaven. Don't look at your Israel and blame them. And say, oh, if I, if, I, if I see these things of God and God do all these things, man, I will fall down on my knee and worship him. Really. We have an access to God that they never had. 
and that is through Son Jesus Christ. We have access to God that they never had. We knew about the Spirit. We knew about worshiping in Spirit and the truth. We knew that we have the Word to give us the knowledge to change our mindset so we can understand the difference between the knowledge of right and wrong. We have this. We have been given access by faith. They didn't know much about such things. So we have more resources and more tools to, our, to, our, to, our, to, uh, to use now in our time and the season. And how many of you are using it? How many? Question yourself. You have more than they did have. You know more than they do know. So don't say, oh man, if God did this and if God... No. The, you see, the God that... Hold tight. Let's get over to verse 44. Our fathers at the tabernacle of the witness in the wilderness as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he has seen. What is this? The Ark of the Covenant. God gave Moses the knowledge to make the Ark of the Covenant in which he dwelt in the midst of his people in those days in tabernacle, which means that because they were moving from place to place to make it to the promised land, wherever they go, the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God goes with them. God dwells on the outside of them because God don't dwell in old wine skin until that wine skin become new. He become that new wine, that new wine skin. It is just for many of us. You're, you're still a sinner. You have not repented of your sin. You have not asked of the Lord Jesus Christ of God to be cleansed, of the, cleansed by his blood and washed by his blood so you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you do not do that, God is not going to dwell on the inside of you to do no work in you. He don't dwell in old one skin, beloved. But when you confess with your mouth and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and ask of him to cleanse you and wash you by his blood and sanctify you and ask of his Holy Spirit to come and indwell in you, then now the God who used to dwell on the outside will now come and be on the inside of you, transforming and changing your life and translating it from unholiness to holiness, from unrighteousness to righteousness, making you, once you were a servant, now you become a son in spirit and in truth. Are you hearing me this morning, beloved? So here Moses has built the ark of the covenant where the presence of God, his was with them. So as they go through the exodus to Israel, to, to the promised land, God dwells in their midst and was doing wonders. So they see it with their eyes, but nothing was happening on the inside of their heart. They couldn't feel or experience the beauty and the power of God upon their life. They could not because he was not dwelling on the inside of them. They didn't know nothing about having a relationship, an intimate relationship with God. Can I tell you what are my own personal experiences? When I used to just go to church, and I promise you I'm going to make it long, I thought to myself it was just holding this big old book in my hand. And every Sunday dressed up looking good and going to church. But a lot of time when I came out of church, I didn't get nothing out of it. I've got to be honest with you. It was a nice little feeling thing. You know, and sometimes I try to push myself to dance and sing like a lot of people. But I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't fully understand it. And I find myself falling right back into sin. Because it's like, it's like, it's like, being, like taking a drink. And after a while it wore onto your, your body. Until God sit me down and I hear the word in my spirit. Intimacy. Devotion. And as a man, I take God to be something of an image that they show me in pictures. So for me as a man, I was like, <laughs> what? Because the word intimacy means for me to be with a woman as a man. I did not see it in any other way. I did not, my mind was not on that thing about spirit. I hear all about spirit. And I can tell you that I do see spirit when I was a young child. I do see it, of dead family members. Or maybe it's a satanic manifestation, whatever it is. But I see these things. But when the Lord got big into reemphasize the word intimacy, in other words, you're looking for intimacy, a lot of you are looking for intimacy uh, uh, with the world and with other people, which only, if you don't know by the power of God and you're not walking in the Spirit, all it did anybody would do is set traps for you to be contaminated and be so messed up by strange spirits coming into your life. So much so that you, your life is filled with afflictions and every type of some of you is catching disease 
from these different people you allow into your life because you're seeking for a relationship to find peace and joy in. But the enemy keep on sending these people into your life to mess your life up. May this not be so more so much any 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 way for you like this anymore in your life. May this never be your portion. I pray that God would open up your eyes so this not happen to you. But this is what was happening to Israel. The Jewish people at this time. They had God in their presence, but he was dwelling on the outside of them. Verse 45 says, Which our fathers, having received it in turn, also bought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David. May the Lord God go before us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and drive out everything. May he start on the inside of us and drive out every wickedness out of us. Drive out every evil out of us. Drive out anything that is hindering us from having a relationship, an intimate relationship with him, beloved. Remember, God is a spirit. He is not flesh. He is a spirit. So God is intimate. He wants that one-on-one -on -one relationship with us. If we, if we can learn to be bonded to God and have a relationship and devotion with God in such a way that he is truly working in our lives, our, we, you will never experience another broken heart. Yeah. You will never. Because your life is governed by the Spirit of God who will allow you to see every spirit that come into your atmosphere to mess with your soul and your spirit. You will see. That's why the Lord God said in the book of Matthew and over in Deuteronomy, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be given you. Our priority and the priority you need to teach, teach your children is to first and foremost have a relationship with God, a relationship and intimacy with God in such a way that by the time the things that you may desire of this world, it may sift you through so you may see what's coming your way. So you can separate yourself from, the, from, from those who have nothing to do with your destiny and purpose to those who have who come to enhance you to your destiny and purpose, which is called divine helpers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we see it happening here. Israel have God in their midst. He goes with them from the wilderness to the promised land. He was in their midst. But they had no relationship with them. Beloved, this day, you have the opportunity to have the relationship with God. Because the God of the Ark of the Covenant, who dwell in the midst of that covenant, who dwell in the midst of that Ark of the Covenant, is present in the midst of it. He was not the Ark of the Covenant. Just the same way it is that the body in which the Holy Spirit God dwell on earth and named that body Jesus Christ. It was just like the physical Ark of the Covenant. But the power came from His presence that was in the midst of the Ark of the Covenant. Just like the Holy Spirit, God Almighty, always in Him, doing wonders and made some demonstrations of signs and wonders amongst the people working miracles. This same God now had made it possible through the sacrifice of the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, to come and dwell in our heart and transform us. Because, beloved, the Bible requires of, of us, God requires of us that we, to be holy as he is holy. And he wants to make us holy so we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we can be saved from his wrath to come. So that we can be saved. So that if we die this moment, beloved, our soul got to go somewhere. And believe you me, if you've been through pain, if you've be, ever been burnt by fire in this world or anything in this world that you know of caused pain and you know the agony and the terror and the fear of pain, then, beloved, you do not want to experience that eternally. Especially knowing that in hell there are worms of fire that keeps on going out and in of that person's body who choose to willfully sin and reject God. They are in hell, tormented every day by these vermin. The Bible says they are in agony and pain, crying out. This will not be a portion this morning, beloved. Simply ask of the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. Simply ask of the Holy Spirit in your life. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty, that he has sent his son to sacrifice on your behalf. That he is the Holy Lamb. And he has given us of his heavenly riches, which is his Holy Spirit. For me and you will be translated and transformed and be holy as he is holy. This morning, will you have a relationship with him? Shift your focus and your relationship focus. Shift whatever it is. Because the wallet, a lot of things that are drawing our focus the moment we wake up each morning is not of God. And if you continue, it will lead you to hell. 
I pray that you have a relationship with God first, this day, beloved, each and every day of your life, and that you may grow in his word. You must, beloved, whatever you do, make it a fight. War, go to war to get into God's word. And as you get into the study, ask of the Holy Spirit to minister to you. And this word will come alive and transform your life in Jesus Christ's name. So, beloved, the God that dwells on the outside now want to come and dwell on the inside of you to make you new. May you accept him today. May you accept him as your Lord and your Savior. He's your Father. He's your Creator. He's your Maker. He's the one that comes to enrich you from within by giving you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and direct your path and your destiny. All you have to do is repent and confess him and say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my God. I know you walk this hurt, Lord God, in your son. Yes, you suffered, you born of a virgin Mary. You walk this earth and you teach the teachings of the kingdom. You suffered and died in Calvary's cross for me. Thank you, Lord. Here I am. I repent of all my sins. Make me new. Make me a servant. I believe that if you sincerely confess in your heart and ask of the Lord to come into your life, you are transformed, you are changed. But beloved, do not stay on the shore of salvation. The journey begins with the word. His physical presence. And as you talk and grow in faith, rise word. May God be with you, bless you. And we meet again in Jesus Christ's name.